Et nous voilà encore au Hellfest Festival pour Bang Bang, le meilleur du métal et de l'alternative rock avec euh, encore une fois des invités prestigieux. On est très content de recevoir des groupes et c'est Wild She Slips. Bonsoir. Oui. <rire> Bonsoir. <rire> Comment est-ce que vous allez Ça fait quoi d'être au Hellfest How are you guys doing How, how does, it, does it feel to be at Hellfest today We're stoked to be at Hellfest. The place is sick. Yeah. This is one of our favorite festivals. So. And we just had a really good fucking show. So we're buzzing. Vous étiez excité sur scène, ça s'est bien passé Yeah, you were really excited on stage, everything went well, right It was... I'm not just saying it, I think it was probably the best show of my life tonight. Really Which is a big thing for me to say, so I had a fucking great time. It was fucking good, I like... I had kind of like... You never know what's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you can be in like the best headspace and expect the best show, but then something can happen. You might just not have a good time. The crowd might be good, the crowd might not. Like, there's so many variables, and today it was one of those ones where we had a great time, the crowd were fucking amazing, our crew were great, everything worked, and it was like, we, I think we walked off with a five of five, which is like, for us, is fucking hard to get five people yeah. to have. The stars aligned for this one, for yeah. sure. It was really fucking good. And we've been like, we've been helping us a few times, we've always played Warzone, and that's been fucking knockout. <laughs> But we've always been like, fuck, I want to play main stage. Like, what would that be like? So, yeah, a big one for the like, tick on the list today. Et justement, vous parlez de lien avec le public et de, de cette force qu'il y a. Est-ce que vous sentez que dans cette musique, justement, le lien entre le public et vous, entre la musique et vous et le public, est plus spécial que dans un autre genre de musique Do you feel like the connection you have with the crowd in us? I knew he, I knew he said that. <laughs> I knew it. I'm gonna, I want to do one when you don't translate and see okay, if we can. Right. Oh, I yeah. thought you were still I translating. Knew it. I, knew it. I thought you were translating my answer. I was like, good luck. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the connection we are, you have, guys, with the crowd and the, the connection that the audience has with bands in our genres of music, is it something that defines uh, our style of music? Because it's maybe different from other music, uh, I don't know, reggae or, or uh, hip hop, I don't know. Do you feel there's a special connection between the audience and the band in our extreme music? In our scene, yeah. yeah. Mm. I, think, I think there's a universal understanding with everyone with live music. There's an element of expression and you get to let yourself free. I think that's universal with all music. But I do think, I think, yeah, there's a, there's a level that we cross with this, with, you know, with the music that we make, which I think is almost, I would argue, potentially more therapeutic for many reasons because you can really let loose than you can with some other genres of music so I do think yeah universally it's, it's similar but we do turn it up I think I think as the years have gone on as well and I always like this idea that if you want a crowd to go crazy like you have to give them exactly what you want to get back so I, I, I look I always think that like I'm not, I, I will never expect a crowd to fucking bounce if I don't bounce. Or you give what you get, innit? Yeah, you get what you give. Or you get what you give. You give what you, you, give give what what you, you get. But I think people have realized now with our shows, and this is kind of like a, become like a bit of a synergy that we have with the audience, it's like you, hopefully people are coming to the show because they know what kind of environment it is. And it's like hopefully come to a sleep show because it's loose and it's like it's fun and we're not, it's not too serious. It's like, it's about having a good time and it's about fucking releasing all that pent up energy and that thing and that's what we're doing on the stage and hopefully that's, that translates and that's what the crowd are doing too. So I, like, I feel like now, after we've been doing it a long time, people come to get what we, people come to do, to do what we're doing on stage basically, to let go of all that shit. C'est une musique donc qui vous a galvanisé, peut-être canalisé, je sais pas, ou en tout cas euh, qui vous a permis dans la vie euh, de gérer plus votre personnalité. Something about personality. That's all. I, didn't, I didn't get that one. We'll try another one. That one went too difficult. Uh, the, the heavy music is maybe a, a, a style of music that allowed you to sort of um, uh, stream all your your different emotions uh, while being a teenager, while growing up too, uh, and trying to, to transform everything into positiveness maybe in your lives. Yeah, I think we all, undeniably, we all suppress so many things, even from the, from the time you wake up to when you go to sleep. I think there's so many moments in the day that we will suppress things that we would maybe want to either say something to somebody or, or feel a certain way, but we suppress it because we've got social obligations. You know, you can't just 
we've been brought up that way. You can't always express how you want to be, how you feel 24 seven. So I think it's very special uh, festivals like this and gigs that we do. It allows us to, there's not many moments in the day you get to let it all out. And this is a safe place to do it. And, it, and it's in a, it's a therapeutic way, which I, I, I mean, it's taken us, it, we loved it when we were kids, but we never understood why. And now I really do understand why, do you know what I mean? It's, it's similar to going to the gym or it's similar to, I think, our, I think our bodies really absorb a lot of stuff internally from ourselves and externally when people, you know, we're like sponges. So this is a perfect way for people to actually just scream and let it all out. How often do you get to scream and fucking shout? And you like, know, it's socially unacceptable, but it's, you're allowed to do it here. So. And you write lyrics from a, from a sort of creative or a musician point of view. You write lyrics that are you trying to translate how you feel, the things that you need to say. Like, or for us, that's kind of what we normally do. You write things that you can't necessarily say in conversation or you say the things that are sort of deepest to you. And then we take that thing that you probably wouldn't feel comfortable telling someone in a spoken way. And we take it to a stage in front of thousands of people and we shout it and scream it in like in that way. And so when I, re when I break it down and I realize that that's what we're doing, I'm like, fucking hell, this is like, this is therapy for us, never mind for the audience. Like we're we're using it for that. Like and that, that's where the resonation comes from because we say something that we feel, and I think that we, the people that resonate, say I want. I was thinking that, and I wanted to say it too, but they obviously never get a chance to say it. But when they come to the gig, they get to agree with what we're saying, so that's their moment too. So yeah, there's there's the synergy for sure. Donc c'est mieux qu'amsi. It's better than going to the shrink, right? Absolutely, yes. And yes. cheaper. <laughs> Much cheaper. A lot cheaper. Et ça rapporte un peu d'argent, ben, pas ça, je pense. Euh... Your own shrink. <rire> Et justement, quand vous étiez petit, euh, c'est à quel moment que vous avez découvert cette musique Vous vous souvenez du, du, de la première fois que vous avez entendu une musique extrême L'émotion que ça vous a donné, qu'est-ce que c'était Do you remember the first time you've heard or listened to uh, extreme music when it was... Extreme, dude <rire> euh, Yeah, for me, I think... Um, I remember going to... I think I got into sort of extreme sports before I got into extreme music. So I think I was like, I used to watch things like X Games and I was like, oh, I love BMX, I love skateboard, I love the way this culture feels. So I got a skateboard, or, uh, to be honest, I think I got a BMX first. I went to the skate park and I saw a Slipknot hoodie mm -hmm. and it was the playground photo. You know the photo of the band on the playground? Like, and I was like, fuck is that like saw someone with it and I was like it looks insane and like this is probably like 1998 or something like that and I was like what's that and I remember going home and like researching it or like asking someone about what it was and, and the first time I saw it I was just like whoa this is like insane and for me Slipknot were like the biggest gateway drug of like of this is so extreme but so cool And I just felt immediately invested in, I was half just the mystery of like what it is, who it is. And it sounded so much more extreme than any other music that I'd heard. I've never heard guitars tuned that low. Do you know what I mean, there's fucking nine members, three people playing drums at once. I was like, this is insane. And then you see this video and they're sending it on this fucking stage. And I was just like, no joke, like fascinated from the get go. And I've been like obsessed with the culture for, the last 25 years like I've literally I'm just, I love new bands I love heavy music I listen to all kinds of music but I find alternative culture fascinating because it is this like it's a way for people to express themselves it's like it's a way it's a therapy side of it too and it's a safe place to put loads of aggression so none of us are aggressive people we're really calm people because we have a safe place to put it for the most part but yeah that that I think I was, that was my first time experiencing it and it blew my mind and I'm still as excited about it today, really. What about yours? I forgot, I forgot the question. <laughs> Your first encounter with the heavy music? My first, <clears throat> my first encounter, was that, I was, kind of, was I listening to a shit before you or really not at all, eh? I think. Like, cause I was skate, were I skating with Aaron before? Because if not, then it's that story. I don't know, I think this, yeah. this is a good story anyway, so. <laughs> um, me and Matt went to the same school. I didn't know the guy. Uh, this is in year seven. How old we met, on, we met on day one in year seven. So, to like 12? Yeah, 11, 12, 12 years yeah. old. And I was like, 
I suppose your average kind of kid. I played football, listened to like Spice Girls and shit. Like, <laughs> that's kind of That's it. what you did at that era. <laughs> and I seen Matt and he looked different to me. He wore different clothes. He wore like baggy jeans and things like that. And I was so like, I'm like, what the fuck's this guy about? I've never seen this before. And then I remember asking him like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he were like, I want to be a thrasher. And I'm like, what the fuck's a thrasher? And what we called a thrasher is essentially just, you know, here. just a rocker, whatever, just an alternative person that doesn't go with the, you know, the natural grain of society, whatever. He said, I want to be a thrasher. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, I play football. That's what I do. Um, and then he basically was like, I'll show you. And then like from, you skate, you fucking ride moment, the eggs. I remember I went to his house for dinner. His mum made me some pasta that I'll never forget. And um, he's got all the Slipknot masks in his room that he's made himself. And it just, and he's got all these different kind of clothes and all this different music and these bangles and shit. I'm like, what is this fucking world? <laughs> and then I literally got home that, eight, like, like that night and I'm like, mum, I know what I want for Christmas. I'm like, I, want, I need a Slipknot hoodie. I need a Linkin Park CD. And I did all these things the next day I come to school. Yeah, about to school with a hoodie and I'm like, have we got right one, dude? Have we got right one? He's like, yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm like, like, okay, let's go. And that's, that's like... I was so... I'd never seen anything before like it. I'd only seen, I suppose, the more common side of life. I think that was 2000 and... And I was like, I want in on this. I'm like, whatever this shit is, I'm in. I think that was 2001. Yeah. 2002. And I like, yeah, fucking... 20 fucking five years later or some shit. The coolest thing is that's literally what we do for a living. Like we are literally thrashing. We are <laughs> like which is like for me the coolest thing. Like when people are like, oh what are you doing now? You're like, oh we're doing the same shit that we do doing in school. <laughs> en tout cas, merci pour toutes ces belles réponses. Juste euh, vous transmettez quelque chose d'extraordinaire. Vous avez le sourire et on sent que c'est quelque chose qui qui est vraiment ancré dans un cœur, cette musique elle crée quelque chose et la connexion qu'il y a eu là elle est très très belle donc bravo. Thank you very much guys and when we interview you when we see you guys on stage we see there's a real strong connection and a connection of love not a connection of like uh, the like, I mean a of posers you know yeah, just like that. we appreciate seeing you guys live and spending a good time with you. No problem thank you. Merci beaucoup et bravo pour Cheers, votre guys, album. Cheers guys thank you. I just went like this. Cheers. <laughs>